anybody wants the copy of it, we are happy to share. Okay. All right. So, so welcome. Welcome to our webinar today. And our theme is Women in Business in the 21st Century. And this the entrepreneurial ability combined with the skill set, knowledge, and hard work has produced outstanding women entrepreneurs in the global business. From a startup to a large organization, women entrepreneurs are now contributing significantly in the development of the all nation. It is a proud moment of women power when we hear leaders like Jacinda Ardner making her mark and winning second time. She is leader who shows the strength on professional and personal front. Today, NG India a Business Chamber is embracing the woman power. And in, in this moment, we decided to make this as an annual event. It's a kind of an announcement today. NG India Business Chamber is bringing together some of the successful women entrepreneurs share their views on today's topic. I, Priyamada Mishra, on behalf of host, I would like to warm welcome and will in, imitate the webinar without further delay. But before we go to our speakers, I would like to tell something about our chamber. It's the time to introduce our chamber. As all of you know, the ENG India Business Chamber and the ENG India Business Chamber has grown as an onwards looking marketing oriented trade body, adding value to its member and the business community to reach out to the global market, particularly with India, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. Chamber success lies in its large network of business contacts in these countries and is focused on young entrepreneurship and ex uh, accent to, on digital business, a significantly marketing-oriented approach and not just an association of corporate community. As all of you know, the NG India Business Chamber has grown as an outwards-looking marketing-oriented trade body, adding value to its members and the business community to reach out to the global market, particularly with India, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore, Chamber success lies its large network of business contribution, the owners, business members like you guys. Today's sponsor is, as we know, it's uh, Istiana Witch, an associate, and she has been helping international community to migrate and relocate services in Australia and helping them in conveying the buying and selling property and also the business support. So today's. I would like to first invite one of our first very uh, guest speaker, Ms. Cheryl Hayes, CEO and Human Behavior Strategic Paragon Research and Business Opportunity through Innovation and Technology. Woman making an impact in business has the lockdown and work from home, you know, it's led to the mindset on women entrepreneurship has this led to an unsearched uh, moment in business. So um, Cheryl Hayes, I would like you to say something about today's topic, you know? I would love to, and thank you for the warm introduction, and thank you to everyone that's made this happen today. I, I much appreciate being part of the panel and my esteemed fellow females and males that are also here. Women, in and as being entrepreneurs, it, it's always been a favour of mine. It's always something that is going to drive me as a female. And I think this topic is one that should be discussed more often. And I think there are so many opportunities, not just within our boundaries, where we cannot actually travel at the moment, but across boundaries in terms of e-commerce and other trading, because there's many opportunities. And the latest data that I have read shows around seven in 10 women the main thing they want to do in entrepreneurship is to support other women. So those stats say it all for me that we want to get behind others that want to help each other in business. So I love to be a part of it. I love to support all people that want to make a difference in business. And sorry, I'm not, not saying anything about men, but I do have a special spot for women and entrepreneurs because I know how hard it can be. I want to uh, just say how the women are contributing in today's um, market in Australian uh, business orientation and how it, we can facilitate from bringing Indian mm -hmm. women, uh, Indian businesses and Singapore businesses and what's happening in, in the entrepreneurial zone here um, and especially in innovation area. Okay, definitely. Okay, well, I think what's happened with the pandemic and uh, I'm a, I'm a stats person, so I'm always going to quote stats, but 
women have been overrepresented in terms of tourism and hospitality and consumer-based services. So they were overrepresented. They were hit the hardest. So they have unfortunately had to be laid off. Then you add childcare, which was taken away in Australia. So all of a sudden, they are the main people that are looking after the household. And they're also, well, statistically, three times more likely to spend more hours at home on caring, looking after the family. And this is just stats. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but they are. They're more likely to do that. And we all have 24 hours in the day. So unfortunately, the women have had to adapt. And some women have done it brilliantly and they've pivoted and their business models have changed and they've looked at different e-commerce and online opportunities. And I think it's fantastic. I, I love the case studies that I hear about that. It's just a time a time aspect and also having the knowledge and the networks to look at the grants and trends that are available for entrepreneurs because we're a smaller sample than what the males are. So our statistics seem to be... Uh, seen as biased in a certain way but I, I see the good side and I think there's great opportunity when we explore it and talk about it. Do you also see the opportunity of collaborating from the businesses overseas? Definitely, definitely. I've worked with many global brands. I've worked um, with very um, male orientated brands in the different um, gas and uh, let's just say um, oil conglomerates. And I, I don't think it necessarily has a gender. I think it has an aligned purpose of the ultimate goals. I think it's even more prevalent to be able to use e-commerce and leverage it to our ability at the moment. And I see, if anything, that this pandemic has let us see that IT and computer-based systems have allowed us to have a voice beyond meeting up for a coffee and talking about opportunity. I think it has opened different markets and they're, they're open to be explored. So I think it's a great opportunity and a platform for people to be a part of. And would you like to ex explain a bit of market segment going on right now, where we stand based on your research? Um, and also, would you like to explore a bit where we our current market is actually leading us in terms of the different market segment and market opportunities, which is opening up uh, in the Australian market after this whole situation? Well, thank you, Priya, for putting me on the spot with the data. <laughs> but, but I shall answer that to the best I can. From the data that I have seen, and it's still preliminary because you have to look back to the data and you look back to 2008 with economic crisis, you can look at how we responded to that. Now we're in the pandemic and it's unknown times. So the lockdowns and the restrictions are still opening and the borders, this is unknown territory. So it's really hard to predict. However, I think there are different segments of the market that are definitely going to survive. And I think those are businesses that are willing to adapt and look at the consumer. And a lot of the branding and the psychology of branding has shown that those companies that relate to the right-hand side of the brain, that do their advertising, their social marketing, and everything related to empathy, and looking at the brand and how they can help, and not necessarily the left-hand side, which is about um, fees, charges, and pushing a, a product or a sale, they're the ones that usually survive in economic downturns. So that's where I see the companies that are smart in their branding and their marketing will really connect with consumers. And I think they're the ones, regardless of the industry, that will survive. For sure, for sure. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we would be coming back to the further questions. Uh, I would like to take this further opportunity to introduce uh, our sponsor again. You know, she's widely respected um, and Stiana, which an associate helping the international community in, in migration and relocation services. So, and she's also, uh, she joined the group. So um, um, let me, uh, Daniela, you there? Um, Say hello to, to the people here, <laughs> if you are in the- Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for sponsoring today. And um, thank you for your time spending with us. So 
Okay, so we, we will move on to, to the next one. And uh, before we move on to the next one, I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Sandhya Raja is one of the India's most respected thought leader on the diversity and inclusion, is the founder and president of Avatar Group and award-winning social entrepreneur. She is the best known as the pioneer of second career opportunity for women in corporate India. She has been recognized as a, a, top, a number 100 woman achiever by India's Minister of Women and Child Development, as also listed in the United Nations Women Transformation India. Widely quoted on the women's career entrepreneurship and inclusive leadership, Dr. Sandaria is highly sought uh, after speaker at conferences, both national, international, and a firm believer in integration, work, and life. So, Dr. Sandaria Rajesh, would like you to welcome. Would you like to part, uh, speak about your topic today? Sure, absolutely, Priya, and that's why I'm here. So wonderful to you know be part of this panel, and it was lovely hearing the thoughts of Cheryl, you know, as she spoke about the kind of opportunities that are there uh, for women, especially uh, not just in the region or the geography that they belong to, but you know beyond and into markets yep. that uh, uh, that they can explore. So. So, um, you know, I, I want to begin by saying that uh, the term entrepreneurship yeah. is actually a very interesting term. A very interesting term. I'm sorry, I'm hearing a, I'm sorry, an I'm echo. Hearing a, a, Can I have the others please put yourselves on mute, please? Because I'm hearing my own voice and it's uh, quite disturbing. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. So I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, I was about to say that the word entrepreneurship, uh, you know, takes its origin from a Indian word, an Indian Sanskrit word called antaprerna. And yeah. the meaning of this is the pressure from within. That's what it really means, antaprerna. Anta meaning inward, prerna meaning impetus. So entrepreneurship is actually a word that is that finds its root in sanskrit in india and uh, when you say antraprerna it means that there is something within you that you wish to express that you wish to create in the form of a business or an enterprise and you know there is an impetus within you to actually go ahead and do that so i think the first thing i'm going to say today in my opening remarks to you priya is that for every entrepreneur to be successful, yeah. I think the most important thing is, do you feel that passion from within? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that there is something that you need to express, that something is there that you need to create a form for? And you know, how do you go about doing it? Yeah. And as far as India is concerned, um, India, um, has about 13.5 uh, to 15.7 million enterprises, yeah. roughly. And this is the statistical data by Bain and company. Yeah. And uh, this is the number about approximately, I would say about 15 million enterprises, which mm -hmm. are owned by women in India. And this actually represents about 29% of all existing enterprises, which is actually a quite small number. So even though women comprise approximately 50% of the population in India, just like everywhere else in the world, uh, the entrepreneurship of women is not equivalent to that of men. Yeah. So it's, it's only about 29%. And therefore, there is definitely, uh, you know, an area for development, for growth over there uh, with regard to women entrepreneurs. But having said that, I'd like to also mention that in India, uh, women entrepreneurs alone um, account for employment of about 25 million people. Mm -hmm. So 25 million people's jobs are in the hands of uh, women, women entrepreneurs. Yeah. Now, the point is, uh, if you look at the MasterCard index of women entrepreneurs, you know, and this is the 2019 data that I'm quoting, yeah. um, you will find that India maintains... Uh, you know, uh, its position at, at actually the 52nd position among 58 countries that were studied. And it is stagnant. It's been at this position for about two, three years. Yep. And this is the point that I really, uh, you know, wish to speak about today, which is that this is a very critically concerning 
point, not only for uh, women, it's a, it's a point of concern for, you know, the entire community and the overall economy. Because if, if only, uh, you know, a, a, a very small percentage of women are actually running uh, businesses of their own, then that means that India has not fully leveraged its potential when it comes to women's workforce participation. And another interesting point that I'd like to make here is that almost 90% yeah. of these enterprises that are run by women in India, they are micro enterprises. Yeah. And about 79% of them are self-financed. So, yeah. you know, so therefore, in the larger ecosystem, there's a lot that can be done in India uh, to ensure that women rise up to the fullest of their potential. They are, obtain, they are given a lot of opportunities uh, to create enterprises, not only enterprises that are, uh, uh, you know, that are uh, profitable uh, and uh, add to the GDP of the country, but also enterprises which create a lot of employment mm -hmm. and therefore are, are a tool in eradicating poverty in the country. Mm. Very interesting. I mean, I've been following your work for a while, <laughs> and I always impress the, the contribution you bring to the people's inclusions and activities on the women's entrepreneurship and your support. Um, yes. It's amazing to see. And yeah, of course, there is a lot to do. And it's not only in India, I'm noticing it's, it's and also not limited to the only developing country, there are a lot to be done into the developed country as well. That's so I'm pretty sure that, you know, the, these facts has to be implemented across the world when it comes to the women entrepreneurship, isn't it, doctors? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Priya, absolutely, yes. So when you talk about avatar diversity, to explore it. Dr. S Dr. Sundari, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm yeah. here. I'm waiting for you yeah. to finish your question. Yeah, I just say avatar diversity. I would like to know a little bit more about oh, what do you yes. mean by that? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. So uh, thank you, Priya, for that question. Um, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to share my own story of how I became an entrepreneur. I began my career at a multinational bank. Uh, this was many years ago, more than uh, you know, a couple of decades ago. And then uh, you know, after marriage, after childbirth, I found uh, you know, a full-time non-flexible career to be unsustainable. So I desired, uh, you know, a career that gave me flexibility, that gave me independence, that gave me control over my own time. So when I uh, quit my job and then started looking for such a career, I realized that it did not exist. At that yeah. time, organizations did not know that women required all these enablers, that it was very important for women uh, to have flexibility, to be able to work at their own pace, these were things which uh, organizations hadn't realized. So I saw an opportunity area over there and yes. I decided that I will be the answer to my own problem. So I set up Avatar in the year 2000. So we are going to be completing uh, 20 years this year. And uh, what started off as a small enterprise that focused on providing second career opportunities for women in India today has grown to become India's largest and most respected diversity and inclusion strategy consulting company. Yes. And we work not only with more than 300 organizations, you know, many of whom are Fortune 500 companies in India, but we also support organizations outside of India in their diversity and inclusion strategy. So today, uh, you know, uh, the way entrepreneurship has uh, kind of uh, uh, taken off in my case is that what I sought as a problem for my unique situation in life, which is that I wanted to work, but I wanted to work at my own uh, pace and at my own time, and I wanted to work for an inclusive company, uh, yeah. that actually gave me an opportunity to set up such an organization for other women like me who also have that same need, 
who want to work in an inclusive organizational culture, who want to work for companies that are welcoming of not only women, but of every diversity strand, and also which, which, are, which are very proud about the fact that they have a diverse and inclusive culture. So yes. this is my uh, entrepreneurship journey. And uh, thank you for asking that question, Priya. Yeah, because I, I, I've been following your work and I was very impressed and I saw your journey. So I thought it will be very impressive for other people to get to know how you actually initiated because it's been a challenge. And I know Samantha is also doing in the same area in Australia you know um and uh, i know she's also supporting a lot of women entrepreneurs who is trying to be inclusive in this community um and wanna be, wanna be coming back to the workforce after all that challenges and the life changes happen in their personal life you know like a baby birth and marriage and all those things so uh, i have followed uh, yours and samantha work uh, closely and i find that they, you guys are supporting very well i'm not saying they're saying that these challenges are not happening they're not no challenges in the men world but it is more women world and especially when the people want to come back to the uh, workforce uh, we are almost losing 50 percent of our country is strength if we are not including the women's the way they should be included there i know there are a lot of people are talking about the equal rights concept but it is still there there is a big gap in that so thank you so much for you answering it. And I will move on to our next segment and I would like to play a video. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna share the screen and I'm gonna play this video for a minute and then we'll get back to the another segment. Thanks to our sponsors. Thank you so much for uh, sponsoring us today. It is a pleasure to have you today. Um, I would like to go to the next segment now, and it's my pleasure to welcome Ms. Samantha Morris, Pempire Coach at Pempire Melbourne on opportunity for startups and solo entrepreneurs in Australia and marketing strategies in international business. So, um, Samantha Morris, I would like you to invite and say, join our you know, event today and speak something about the work you have been doing and supporting the way you are in the women's entrepreneurship journey. 
Yes, thank you, Priya. It's so wonderful to be here today and to share some of this knowledge with other women. Uh, Vampire are a, a female focus brand and we work with women who are starting up or trying to grow businesses not only here in Australia but this year has really seen our brand blossom into international markets which is really brilliant yeah yeah so you you want to share something the work Empire has been doing because I know that this is originated from the birth I think Western Australia and you guys grew up from there yeah Yes, so Fempire was actually founded by Marnie Lefebvre, whose uh, work origin started with a, a job all over the world um, and it, of particular note working with uh, Richard Branson. Yeah. She came back here to raise her family and was really, really focused on the values around what women bring to business. And I really resonated with those values. So when the opportunity came to become a coach with Fempire under that brand, I really jumped at it because I really do believe that women are such an important part of the business landscape. And I think that we really need to change the way we operate and run businesses. And it needs to be less of a domination on masculine characteristics and I think that not only women stepping forward but it's good for men to have the opportunity to develop the parts of them that are more in line with uh, yeah with, with their feminine side yeah would you like to share your screen and show your presentation if it's okay with yeah, you? so I, I've put together a bit of a presentation yeah. for you today so can you all see that yeah Okay, wonderful. So once again, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for having me here today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the opportunities for startups and solopreneurs in Australia, and also a little bit about marketing strategies uh, for international business. Um, as I said, FEMPI is a female-focused organisation, and we feel that women are very much involved in growing meaningful and impactful and sustainable businesses. And that's really, really needed in the world right now. Surinder, can you please mute yourself? Yes, yes, Samantha, go on. Sorry. Yeah. So successful international opportunities for women lie in collaboration and joint ventures. The Australian business landscape is slowly changing. Um, we're a country that is economically supported by the dominance of small businesses here. And of our small businesses, 34% of those are owned by women. And that number is growing and it's growing at a faster rate year upon year. Mm. So what's really exciting about Australian small business is that we lead the charge for being innovative when we collaborate with our international partners. So yeah. that means we're really open to sharing ideas and the benefits of learning that come from, uh, from joint ventures and collaborations. So this year has seen the market for manufacturing open up because of COVID, uh, you know, a, a lot of the manufacturing and importing into Australia ground to a halt. So it's really opened up the opportunities for other countries, um, such as India, to step up their negotiations with Australia to become, for example, uh, importers of goods and services. Uh, our interest in innovation has seen us push for more women to also be involved in STEM, and that is emerging um, through the development of a lot of grants in Australia for, for startups and entrepreneurs. And I'll be really, really interested actually to see what the statistics reveal in 2021 after this year of massive disruption. Uh, back in 2015, this report was prepared by the university and that paint at the University of Melbourne and that paints an outline of what the average small business owner in Australia looks like as a woman. And, and we're pretty well educated. Um, we're a little bit older, which means that um, we, although access to finance is a bit of a problem, a lot of us sort of have a little bit of money behind us. So that certainly helps in business. So some of the biggest challenges that we face uh, as women in business. Uh, number one is acquiring customers and that need, means 
you need an understanding of marketing. We do all face <laughs> we do all face the challenge of balancing work and our passion for our careers with the responsibilities we have for family. And that's not just raising children, but that's also being caregivers to older family members. And it does usually fall to the woman, no matter how hard we try and, and say that it should be shared, it does fall to us. Uh, in adopting technology, one of the biggest problems we've got there is uh, the lack of funding. Uh, it's really difficult for um, women to get funding sometimes to fund uh, technology and business. Financial management can also be an issue just because it's very, very different to manage finances in business than it is just to be running your household because there are implications associated with taxes and things like that. So, and also women really do need flexible work arrangements. And uh, sometimes if we stick with the business norm, which is nine to five, those arrangements don't work for women who have other responsibilities. So how can we win? Well, one of the great things that I'm seeing growing in Australia is the uh, networking groups that are targeting uh, women and supporting women. And that is a really good way for us to connect because we've been a little bit hidden in recent years. And even though we have some quite successful women in business and in entrepreneurship, they tend to not be they don't have the spotlight shone on them. So we don't have those mentors to look up to. So uh, the other advantage of collaborating with an international partner is that you can leverage time zones. It's not actually a disadvantage. You can have ways to extend your work day if you are partnering with someone in a different time zone. There's also the opportunity for mutual learning because anytime you collaborate with somebody who has different experiences and different skill sets, that's only an advantage to business. And of course, it can be more cost effective because you can pull your money for things like marketing uh, to it's essentially you can double your budget, which means you can do a lot more with it. Ooh, there we go. Um, so marketing is all about standing out from the crowd, being found and connecting with your audience. In a recent survey uh, by the Australian International Business um, Sector in 2019, it was revealed that there was a predominant reason why Australian businesses were not already working with India in particular, and that was a difficulty in actually finding partners. Um, so regardless of anything else in business, you can't be the world's best kept secret. People have to know that you exist. And that's why marketing is really, really important. So there's some really key factors for being successful in marketing. One is trust. You really have to develop a relationship that's based on trust with people. Uh, particularly when you're talking about global markets, because uh, you need to be able to be trust your partner and their delivery and their product and their service. The other one is relevance. So uh, customers that buy from you, they do so because you've got a solution to their problem. And this is true no matter where you go. So your marketing has to be solution oriented. And that means getting to know your customers really well. You need to speak their language. And when I say that, I'm talking about um, cultural lingo. For example, if as a someone in marketing might talk to somebody else and say, and talk about um, posting on stories and doing reels and things like that. If you're not around social media, that language barrier stops you from communicating effectively. Uh, for marketing, you definitely need a framework or a plan in which to uh, pull all your messaging together. And whatever you do, it needs to be scalable because you've got to consider room for growth in business. So it, when you're investigating international markets and doing your marketing, you've got to do your research. It's really, really important. You have to understand differences in language in education, uh, the expectations of the people that you're delivering to, because they can be quite different from what you're used to within your own country. There are always cultural differences and there are subsets in culture as well. And also differences in technology from the devices that people use to the availability of the internet. 
Uh, there are political and legal requirements and you have to be very much in tune with what those are. And of course, business practices uh, and customs can also be a really important factor to get right when you are doing international business. But despite all of that, I would like to say that I would never tell anybody to not go ahead with international business. It's really important. Don't let the borders or the barriers stop you. So thank you. I'll just finish sharing there. Thank you, Samantha, for your input. Um, it, is in, it is very important uh, to have your perception um, in the market, the way you are creating your perception and how you're going to be perceived in the market, your business is going to de actually define and showcase based on the perception you are creating. And yeah, marketing is a key element for sure. And also thank you for uh, sharing those challenges um, you, you have been seeing in, in this area with the women's. That brings to our uh, you know next segment. I would like to invite Jayanti um, uh, Jenti Manin and Ms. Jenti Manin is a successful woman entrepreneur and director of Cheese Resource Management, Singapore, India, Houston, and Dubai. Uh, multifaceted personality. Ms. Jenti has more than a decade of experience in the field of oil and gas and community trading. A very active member of the Singapore Indian Chamber of Commerce. She has represented the Prime Minister's delegate to Germany and also took part in the vibrant Gujarat Global Summit representing SICCI, a recipient of several prestigious awards. Ms. Jenti is also an effective speaker on many forums. She's forced, uh, based out of Singapore. So I would like to invite Ms. Jenti Mani. Ms. Jayanti, there? Very good afternoon to all of you. I'm Jayanti again, and uh, I'm the director of Chase Resource Management Private Limited. It's a supply chain management company for, uh, we support drilling companies and we do EPC for drilling and exploration companies. Uh, today, the topic I'm going to talk about is on women making a difference in Singapore business. Okay, Singapore, as you know, many of you might have visited. It's a very vibrant city, and it's also a financial hub with a population of 5.7 million residents and with its strong links. Singapore has developed into Asia region's largest center for foreign exchange, for commodity trading, as well as a wealth management hub. Women make about 26% uh, of all business owners. And we have been beating the oaths and breaking traditional stereotypes, especially in the startup world today, where there is no lack of amazing female entrepreneurs to recognize and celebrate. Um, in Singapore, we have advanced in many areas uh, for the women entrepreneurs, including education, workforce, politics, boards, and uh, though gender equality still exists due to cultural phenomena, due to um, social pressures, the government is taking a lot of efforts to make a change to our cultural and value system. And the whole society is getting retuned and women are actually making a real difference in the business world now. There has been an increase in representation in corporate boards and listed companies in Singapore. Sorry, uh, and, uh, sorry to interrupt, Jayanti. Uh, guys, can you please mute yourself? Just please respect. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, CA yeah. Shangani, please mute yourself. Can I continue? Okay, guys, I'll just continue. Okay, yes, there's been a lot. Yeah. yeah, there's been increase in representations in corporate boards, listed companies, and through collective efforts, the position of women in Singapore in the recent uh, studies has improved significantly, I should say. We are ranked 11th out of 162 countries and marked the first for the proportion of women employed with advanced degrees. Looking at statistics, one of the studies done ratio-wise 73% of female employment has in 2019, and out of that 16% were 
were holding board positions in 100 listed companies. And uh, among ASEAN, highest women CEOs have also been recorded in Singapore. And in parliament, we have got like 28 seats taken by women out of 95 seats, which is like 30% of women take the seats in parliament. Women have really been making a difference in Singapore business despite their heavy load of looking after their homes. I think that's really amazing. Next few minutes, let me share my own experience as a woman entrepreneur in Singapore. And um, uh, maybe that could give you an insight of the acceptance of sure. how Singapore is taking it. Like for me, I started my business 15 years ago. Has, uh, uh, I, I started a business with my partner in a male dominated industry, oil and gas. Yes. So it was a fluke and an opportunity thrown to me. Um, it was, uh, it looked really crazy to me. My current business partner wanted to start this oil and gas company where I had no experience at all. Being from more of a, a business, as having a background of business administration, I had no clue about what engineering was, how, oil and gas was going to be. And uh, in the year early 20s, we could see that it was a very rapidly uh, growing industry in Asia, especially the ASEAN. And uh, it was, uh, I went in with two minds. I was not at all confident. And I really did not have faith in myself. Will I make it in this business? And as I went slowly, I learned a lot of things. And uh, uh, one of my experiences in Brunei, when I went there for a meeting, they threw me in front of many engineers, experienced engineers in Shell. And they told me, you have to make a presentation. Truly, though I was in oil and gas, I didn't even know how a pipe would look like in a vessel, you know, or yeah. what was drilling, what do they even use to drill. But uh, of course, being a woman was always an advantage. People would not, you know, uh, they would give you a chance, a benefit of doubt, and, you know, they won't embarrass you. Okay, so I just went to speak about everything and everything which I did know, not know about. And it was a real nightmare to me. I absolutely had no clue about what I was talking. But at the end of the day, when I came out of that meeting, that gave me the confidence that I could do it. I could do it. And uh, many times when I have spoken about this experience to many women, it has given them this inspiration that they could also come out of fear someday with what I had done. Okay. So after the uh, presentation, I really felt horrible and uh, really hopeless. And that was the day I said, no, I have put my foot down. I am going to gain the knowledge. I'm going to gain the experience. And this is something I want to do. And slowly, uh, I used to go to vessels. I used to go to um, uh, petrochemical plants. I used to carry pipes. I used to fit everything. And I used to go right down to the bottom and do whatever all my guys started doing. And today, I know that my employees cannot cheat me with anything. Because when they tell me they can't do something, I have got the experience to say that, hey, you can do it this way. You can do it that way. And it opened up a lot for me. Yeah, we have opened. Uh, we have opened now offices in India, Dubai, Houston, and rep offices all around ASEAN. And um, I go, I do meetings myself now, and it has given me a lot of confidence. And I'm proud to say that I have made a name in the male-dominated industry, though I was looked at differently in the earlier days. In the earlier days. And I went up a vessel, all contractors and the guys working on the vessel used to look at me like a ghost. What is the woman doing here? No? But thank God now with the, uh, the, uh, uh, with the exposure and more women coming into the industry, doing marine engineering and coming into the industry, I can see that there is a certain level of acceptance which makes me feel even more confident. Acceptance levels are definitely changing because me now sitting in boards, sitting in managements of the uh, temples in Hindu Endowment Board in Singapore and being a review committee for applied studies for polytechnics and ITAs with the Ministry of Education. I've, um, uh, it shows me that they have accepted women in many uh, high positions. And um, of course, I've been given the award of the Indian Business Leader uh, Singapore Prestigious Award, Singapore Maritime Distinguished Award. That means uh, women have been accepted and they would 
they want more women to come in. And there are many aspiring women out there in Singapore who are capable, but have this fear that they will never succeed. So I've in fact said my stories in many TV programs, in many interviews, and I just want to help many women, motivate many women and give them the courage and tell them that you will be recognized. As the saying goes, risk something or forever sit with your dreams. So I would rather risk and go in it uh, than just sit back. Women should positively enter the business world with courage and there will be no turning back, trust me. And I encourage all women to make a difference, not only in Singapore, in everywhere in the world, and hope we can see this happen. With that, um, thank you for your time and um, I'll be ready for the, your questions. Thank you. Thank you, as always. It's a, it's always a pleasure listening to you. And thank you for your inspirational story. It actually, it showcases, yes, acceptance is all is growing in all industry. When I see, you, you know, parading on 26th of January, it's, it's just changed the whole mindset where, you know, Army, Marine, oil, IT industry, when I came, there was not much leaders back in those days in India. And it, it, is, it is amazing to see how almost 50%, uh, you know, IT work forces women now in India, it's, it's amazing acceptance is coming um, from all society and all, all the side of the life. Um, thank you for sharing today. And, you know, that actually reminds me, you know, Maya Angelou's poetry says, you may write me down in the history with your bitter twisted ties. You may trod me in the very dirt, but it's still like dust, I will rise, right? So, it reminds me when I see the powerful woman like you guys, uh, where we where we are, where we were, and where we are, right? We, that brings to our uh, almost last segment. So we will ask uh, since we have not much time left, but we will ask some questions if it's all okay with the um, you know panelists and uh, participants can ask their questions if they have any questions on the chat. If you will not be able to answer that, we would like to send it through the email. And you guys can also save the chat if you are interested to communicate further. And we promise our speakers will reply you back uh, with their, you know, whatever ways they can support you. So um, that, uh, Samantha, I would like to start with you. Australia has one of the best startup ecosystem in the world. Can you tell us on the major factor behind this growth and what is the success rate of these startups? Yes, so we do enjoy quite a good ecosystem for startups and particularly this year because the government has rolled out so many programs to assist business because they're recognising that, uh, that, that business is such an important economic factor that has all fallen in a heap this year. Um, the statistics around the success of small business aren't very good, but I do question those statistics because I, when we survey small businesses and the reasons behind failure. I don't think we're reflecting and asking the right questions to assess what's happening because I don't think that failure rates are quite what they're deemed to be. I actually think that sometimes businesses transition and grow. And also we've got to factor in that uh, there's quite a few businesses out there that are deemed as failures, but they, they could be side businesses or things like that that people decide not to continue on with. So I think that success in small business is actually not reflected well and the support in funding and networking and education for small business here is yeah. actually creating a much, much better success rate than what we're seeing in the statistics. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, my next question um, to actually in Dr. Sondaria, um, you, you have mentored over 10,000 corporate leaders. What are the major challenges these corporate leaders shares with you and particularly in the women leaders and the small entrepreneurs? So the uh, corporate leaders that we have mentored, it is primarily in the space of diversity sensitization yeah. and inclusion training which means how do we get uh, the men to be uh, good allies to women in the workplace? And how do we get the women to display a powerful intentionality in making sure that they are focused on their careers and they get where they want to go instead of, you know, uh, appearing to be victims or appearing to be people who are, you know, the weaker sex. So uh, it's in this aspect that, you know, our mentoring has really helped. 
what we have found is that uh, in a lot of cases we assume that you know men are sort of against the the growth and the confidence of women that you know they don't uh, appreciate women uh, taking their own and so on but i find that to be uh, you know just a stereotype i have seen many many male allies who are ready to help and support women and i have also seen that when women display that intentionality right that career intentionality which says that you know i will get to this destination i will go where i want to go you find that you know men also help them and support them in their journey yeah so yeah. so that that is a very critical uh, you know a, a frame of reference that we really need to have as women instead yeah. of looking at men as you know the 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 enemy or you know looking at men as saying that they are the patriarchy they are the ones that have pushed us down i think it is time for us to sort of look at them and say that we are in this together yeah and it is going to be for the benefit of both of us if men and women rise to the fullest of their potential and how do we make that happen yeah so my experience in mentoring Uh, several thousand men and women across the major corporates of india has been that all that is required is just that sensitization you know just Thank the you. fact you need to kind of open their minds up uh, you know you need to give them data you need to tell them that this is the situation and you know let's all partner together in this journey so that that would be what i would uh, share with you priya thank you thank you for your um, wisdom words um, and my my personal example is that i have been well supported by the, my male you know participant of my family and i am here because of my husband i am proudly saying always you know i wouldn't be here if he wouldn't be supported me so and i always see that it, there are a lot of successful women i have seen they are very well supported so that actually data i'm giving the data to support your uh, conversation so that brings to my questions to the sheril you know living a side business women have not always uh, fared well in politics america has not had a woman president australia has seen only one one woman prime mm. minister and so in united kingdom is there any prejudice against women in political leadership um, what is your data supports oh Well, I do not want to bring up Biden or Trump or any of, the, <laughs> of of that caper and I know talking about politics or religion is a no-go zone. However, I think that data speaks for itself really. Yeah. Uh, we have not had the data for the women representing politics and there I loved how Jacinta in New Zealand won by a landslide on the weekend she made history and they're still looking at the cursory analysis of the data at the moment but it's indicating that the top reason is the way she's handled the pandemic and yeah. this is a woman who saw the volcano she she actually took her child into parliament question and answer session and breastfed uh, and she just ruled it this is all within her first term and she has just shown empathy um resilience um in a really compassionate empathetic way and she hasn't taken charge and shown someone brought that point up before you don't have to be like a man and show aggression she's shown humility and she's shown a uh, community conscience and she's got all the, everyone on board and not just the males or women or everyone she's got them all on board she's done a really good job and that's all that matters regardless of your gender she's just done a really good job so i think it's women like that it indicates role models because i think a lot of women look up to role models and if you look into different areas of or in nautical engineering or in politics or anything else in science if you don't see those women there you don't have that role model to look at so you're looking at an area that seems so like your point earlier you saw just the gas um and and the vessels and the gas and oil and you took it on charge but if you saw more women there i bet you would have felt more comfortable walking along those planks to work out how to, how to work out the pipes and the engineering because you've seen it done but you're a pioneer in that area uh, but i think it needs it also it, it extends to the society i think as well because there's 
the Society of New Zealand and also in other areas are ready to elect those type of constituents. There's yeah. some that aren't ready for that. And yes, well, I, I wish there was a, a female up against Biden and Trump at the moment, because wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep. So it's still miles to go before we see, sure. you know, for sure. So for for your um, experience uh, in your data industry as well, I know it's not a female dominant uh, industry as well. You, mm -hmm. What kind of challenges you faced in the data analytic area? Because it's also very much, you know, stereotype thinking that, you know, analytics and you know more mathematics mm -hmm. side and all that is for the male uh, you know oriented oh yes oh yes when i started at in my last corporate world i think the whole all the men well the men dominated they're all directors i think the the women were just statisticians i say just but we were statisticians and we had to work our way up and i think by the end when i'm quite proud to say when I become director, I think I turned, I think it was 80% of the workforce were then women. <laughs> because yeah. I, I do, I'm not saying I had an active interest in hiring women. However, I was more accommodating to their needs. And when they needed to take a laptop home because they needed to work at home, I, I was okay with that. Because as long as they did their work, what, why do they have to be in the office? I, I think it's more about appreciating how people do their job and meeting the deadlines and appreciating what they need. And yeah. that, that, that was what I was all about and not seeing that, oh, they're going to have a child, how are they going to get back in the game? No, how do we keep them in the game? How do we keep them in the game and, and provide them with the tools and this? Because guess what? Their loyalty to the clients and to us is going to be forever. Yeah. And I realised that early on and that's why I still have many young women that I mentor and I love them because they they will always remember me for helping them through those times. Yeah, and it has always been said that if you, if you help them help people in their toughest time, they you will be the yes. best leader at that time and which you have shown in your career time as you have been seeing your work a couple of times and amazing to watch yes. you. That brings Thank you... you. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Miss Jayanti Manina, I I know the word you have, you know the the journey you have mentioned becoming a linchpin in your industry. I think it's is I think it's a need for every single entrepreneur, no matter what you do, whether it is a male dominance or non non dominance industry. I think becoming a linchpin is is re really basic requirement, isn't it, Jayanti? Definitely, definitely. Because uh, firstly, I think uh, it's also because women are always taken. I see this gender equality is has always been there, and any woman generally who is looked at is more looked at, especially in Asia, as to be to do motherly duties. So when we get into any new industry or anywhere that we get to, right, um, if the basics are not there. They don't even look up to you. Yeah, yeah. So I think that 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 that's definitely very important. And as we show them that uh, our responsibilities and the multitasking that we are good at, yeah, as women, I think uh, it 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 really uh, helps a lot. Yeah, mm. yeah, for sure. So that brings to my question to you, another one. As an entrepreneur based in Singapore, how do you find the atmosphere and support level from the government and from the industry in encouraging the women entrepreneurship in Singapore? Government has always been promoting uh, women entrepreneurship in Singapore. And uh, if you know Singapore, Singapore is pretty fair, though there is a gender inequality, but it's more fair. And uh, women are very highly regarded. Uh, has um, uh, responsible entrepreneurs and we have good numbers of entrepreneurs though at this point of time when I say 26 percent I think there are more entrepreneurs and we can see in time to come at least 40 percent women entrepreneurs in Singapore yes. and with this COVID, uh, people COVID has also made people understand that uh, uh, women are actually with the work-life balance Women have proved to be also good entrepreneurs, and government has actually given grants to women, especially. Yeah. 
women, uh, they are promoting grants to women to have a work-life balance with home and business and to come up more as women entrepreneurs. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. So like as, as you data suggests that there are a lot of support. I know Australia, Australian government is actually giving a lot of grants and support to women and also um, in, in uh, Singapore. And I, am, I have also heard a lot of support coming in India as well. Um, you know, Dr. Sondaria, would you like to mention something, the kind of support government is bringing for the women entrepreneurship? Yeah, sorry, I took a minute to unmute myself. Um, so in India, the scene around women entrepreneurship is quite, uh, uh, quite optimistic. Um, and I would say this largely because, um, especially after the pandemic, there has been a, a, a strong uh, movement to ensure that small businesses, especially women-owned businesses, are provided with collateral-free loans in order to uh, you know both set up their business as well as increase uh, you know working capital so this is happening most nationalized banks have been given uh, you know the authority to sanction these loans and a lot of uh, uh, you know um, non banking organizations are also in this uh, you have the uh, uh, you know sidbi which is one of the big uh, uh, you know lending bodies in india which has come up with several uh, women specific uh, lending programs where they are hoping to ensure that women owned businesses do not get left by the wayside when it comes to uh, uh, you know sort of uh, taking this up and running yes. but i have a word of caution here uh, see, India is a gigantic, huge country, and it's very, very, very difficult, uh, you know, for all of the, uh, uh, the, the uh, you know, the operations of any particular scheme or any uh, uh, aspect uh, to trickle down and to reach the beneficiaries correctly. So my suggestion is this. While there have been a lot of plans, a lot of uh, programs which have been announced by the government, I think it is in our interest for us to do our own homework, for us to do that research, for us to identify those schemes, and for us to, you know, reach the relevant authorities, knock on their doors, not once, not twice, uh, you know, but and make sure that we are able to obtain those uh, benefits. Yeah. And, and if we assumed that it would happen very smoothly the way it happens in other countries, in the, the so-called developed countries, uh, I, I'm afraid that's not going to be the case. So yeah. while I know that there are you know, schemes which show that there is a very strong positive side to that impetus in India with regard to women entrepreneurship. I would also urge every woman entrepreneur who is part of this uh, audience today uh, to, you know, not just rest thinking that the benefit will reach you in some way, but actually, uh, you know, just get off and, and make sure that you are able to identify schemes which benefit you. Yeah. So that is is super crucial, uh, is what I would like to say, Priya. Thank you so much. And I think in no matter which country you belong to, it's like if you're jumping into the water, you need to know the how, basically how to swim, you know. And as uh, Jayanti mentioned, that you have to become a linchpin. You have to become, you know, you have to understand the very big, de every detail of the business. And I'm sure uh, conferences like this can actually educate a lot of people and the entrepreneurs are actually contributing a lot to educate a lot of men mentorship and coaching is going on. And I think it's, it's still there are a lot of big gap which we need to be filled out. Um, and I, I think this, this kind of events are going to actually educate more people. That brings to our then, uh, last uh, video I would like to share a bit one of uh, our, you know, long time um, in sponsor which is in the education industry so IAMC training group is an Australian nationally recognized training group that has offices located in Australia Philippines Indonesia and India we offer accredited and non-accredited training across several industries in which we offer flexible learning options such as 
online virtual classrooms, face-to-face -face learning, recognition of prior learning, and self-paced learning. Our partnership with the Royal Institute of Singapore allows our students to apply for globally recognised for your current level of qualification. We also have a partnership agreement that allows students the choice to apply to 186 universities that are located in 20 different countries. On top of all this, we are continuously developing the technologies that we use to create a better experience for our students. Most recently, we have been working on releasing a study guide for this report that can be used to manage students Our students to use our learning management system wherever they may be with the ability to access all the content whether they have internet connection or not. Lastly we would like to mention our corporate partnership with Carbon Neutral. Together with Carbon Neutral we have been able to plant 11,000 trees helping sustain a better environment for us and generations to come. Our goal here at AMC Trinity is to help educate skill set and allowing them to progress in their career. Thank you. Thank you for your time today and it was amazing uh, today uh, hearing all that panelists and the people joining us today. Thank you for everyone who participated and contributed your time. I know you have been doing better things um, in your life today, but you you decided to come here and we are really, really uh, appreciative to you. Anyone wants to connect with any of our panelists, they can directly contact our chamber. Um, we would be happy to um, connect. And if you have any further question, please feel free to ask uh, Mr. Santosh, who's the CEO of the chamber and he can actually um, fill you with your information or any kind of a support you guys are looking for going national or international. Um, and we are happy to support our uh, current par partner, uh, our current sponsor, she is always helping people to go overseas and establish their business. So if you guys are looking for any business establishment in Australia, she, uh, our, she can help you in the business migration side as well. So thank you, Daniela, for your uh, sponsoring today. And Istianovich and Associate are always there to help if you, in case you need any help. So Santosh, that brings to our closing time now. Thank you so much, everybody. And we will see you guys another time on this. Yeah. Thank sure. You. Thank you, Priya. Thanks, everyone. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, you know, like I said, yes, this was a total rock star panel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, completely enjoyed being part of this. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandhya. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jenti. Thanks, Sheryl. Uh, I concur. I concur. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> lovely to be, lovely to meet you, you lovely women, and I look forward to speaking in future. And all the wonderful men out there, yes, support <laughs> us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.